well, let's go ahead and try to implement some of this functionality. I will leave some of the functionality for you to implement uh, because you should be able to generalize what we talked about with the user model to the, the login uh, resource. Uh, but th there are some new things that I do want to point out that are different here because it's, it's a slightly different resource. So let's start and look at these errors. And the first thing they're all doing is they're complaining about this uninitialized constant logins controller. Well, mm, that makes sense because we haven't created our controller. So let's go ahead and Rails generate. We're going to generate a logins controller. And so when we do that, um, we get all the data we want and we say, um, oh, this created a little bit extra information here. We could say that was too much information and we could destroy that or we could have just deleted that that single extra set of, of tests. I'm going to remind you that it's no test framework here that we can run in order to not get those extra tests to be to be written for us and now we have got our app controllers now we have a logins controller like we expect and so if we now run our tests we want to see our errors change because we've, we've provided that level of functionality and now that the tests are airing, we see things like we don't see this new action in the, the logins controller, which is great. That's the first action that we would probably want to tackle anyway. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to do our new action here and uh, go ahead and run the test again. Again, we, we expect this to fail because we haven't providing any real functionality. But sometimes it's nice to just let the test kind of lay out for us exactly what we what we need. And here it, we see that now we, we have our new action but we don't have the matching template to, to go with it. So let's go ahead and create that. We're going to edit app views. Now this is for our logins and this is the new action. It's HTML.erb, and uh, we can just put in here a uh, placeholder. Right? So we don't expect this to help um, pass any tests, but it does help the the tests run and and say, well, okay, you do have content now, and I can try to render it, and now we'll get errors specifically saying things like I expected to be able to have this login button or to be able to fill in this username and and none of, of that is there. So you can see that unable to find field username um, and unable to find button login in there. So uh, we didn't want placeholder we wanted sign in. So that's a, a good first thing to do. Let's change that to sign in. Sign in. We can run that now and we already passed one of our tests because uh, we, we have the, the proper text in there. And now it gets a, a little bit more difficult because now we need to do this username and um, login button. And if we quickly um, look for inspiration at our users uh, new page remember we have this partial with a field so let's edit that uh, well let's not um, we have this form for and at user and you remember um, we did user dot new in the controller uh, in that uh, da -da. We have our user dot new here, but that doesn't make sense in the case of our login controller because we're not going to have any object that 
represents being logged in or, or logged out. So if we go back to our uh, views, uh, users, new here, we can't have an equivalent at login that we're going to be able to say login.new and have an empty field here. And so we're not going to be able to use a form for and give it an object that we want to give our form for. Um, instead, what we're going to have to do is is do a little bit more work. Um, Rails provides us mechanisms for giving information if if we can't provide it in in Rails objects. So let let me walk you through that a little bit here. So we're going to look at the logins right here. And what we're going to do is instead of form four, we're going to create a form tag. And so this is more like using a, a form method equals blah, blah, blah. It, it's it expecting more information from us. And so if we give it a, a form tag, we have to tell it where this form should point, right? Where the, the action and uh, the action, oops, uh, form tag is going to be the name of the path that we want this form to post to. We want to post to this logins path right here. So what we can do is we can say we want it to post to this logins path. And it will create a, f a form tag that, that does that. But notice I did not do what I had done before. I didn't give it a, a form variable. I don't have that with a form tag like we did with a form for uh, method. And, and so I can't do something like form dot you know text field or something like that because that doesn't exist anymore. What what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to be more explicit. Um, and so we know we need we scroll back up we need a username field. So let's create a username field and uh, we will do. Uh, text field and before it looked like form dot text field but we don't have that form so we're going to tell it create a text field tag and we have to um, do two things we need to give it an ID and so this is going to be our user uh, name and then we have to give it a default value and um, and a value where we want to stick it uh, when it's submitted um, because if there's an error, we want it to look in that place for the, the default value. And we know when we submit forms, they go in the params object. So we'll just get, tell it to look for this one in the params object under the, the username uh, value. And let's go ahead and give this a label tag as well. And here's where we're going to connect it with via the ID of username. And uh, we also know that we need a login button. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do a submit tag here. And we know it's, the text has got to be log in right there. So now we have something that looks similar to our form for, but we had to be a little bit more explicit than we were with our user um, form because it doesn't know where to submit it and where to stick that information or get that information back since we don't have an object associated with this form. So let's go ahead and run these tests now and what we should see now are complaints that we uh, don't have a password. because we've got our username but we don't have our password and um, this one is again going to be very similar we're going to uh, go 
go ahead, let's do a label first this time. We're going to make a label for our password. And this is going to be a password field tag connected via that, that symbol. And we're going to tell it to look for defaults and stick it into our params in the password key right here. So now we're in much better shape to be able to run these tests and be able to, to fill in our form and submit it uh, the, the way we want to because we, we've got all that data. And now what we see are that we are trying to hit our create route and we seem to have passed our, our new action. So we'll finish this episode and pick this up next for on our, our next episode.